This is a picture of a meal my wife Michelle and I shared last week. On the plate are tacos made with rice, beans, tofu, and veggies from the local farmer's market. It was a really tasty plant-based meal. Six years ago, I was probably eating something like this. Meat and potatoes. So what happened? Let's go on a journey together, a journey of science and ethics so you can understand why I made this transition. We've all heard about the threat of climate change. Every year, the situation becomes more urgent. Scientists believe we have one decade to make substantial efforts to address climate change and other environmental issues, or catastrophic impacts will be unavoidable. These impacts may include fresh water and food shortages on a large scale, an increase in natural disasters, the destruction of coastal cities as sea levels rise, and even the destabilization of the global economy. The threats are terrifying, and the crisis seems overwhelming. Sometimes this leaves us feeling helpless. But I've found that the best way to deal with this helplessness is to take action. I want everybody to think of something that you do to help the environment. Maybe it's recycling or drinking from a reusable water bottle. I'm sure at least a few people are thinking about riding a bike or driving a Prius. We all want to do something, and all the actions you are taking deserve praise. Every action truly does help. What if you knew something you already do every day, multiple times a day, could have enormously positive impacts on the environment? It's simple, easy, affordable, and millions of people across the world are already leading the way. It's called eating. Well, it's not the act of eating, but our collective food choices that have such massive impacts on the environment. So much so that food systems are likely the biggest factor in our ability to create a sustainable world. By now, it's probably apparent that I'm gonna be telling you what you should and shouldn't eat today. Before I lose the entire audience by doing just that, I'd like to share my favorite definition of sustainability. Dr. John Ehrenfeld defines sustainability as the possibility that human and other life will flourish on the planet forever. I love this definition because it goes beyond maintaining the basic material needs for human existence. While that is crucial, we all need clean air and food and water, I believe our goal should be more aspirational. Our goal should be to create a world where all life can flourish. So let's first look at how humans can flourish. Possibly the most important aspect of human flourishing is the opportunity to live free and authentic lives. Authentic means being free from social norms and exploitation so you can make choices that bring true satisfaction. This involves dismantling human systems of oppression, such as patriarchy and systematic racism. And it involves having access to adequate resources so you can be healthy and pursue a good life. My passion to create a world where all life can flourish brings me here today, ready to promote an idea that is unfamiliar to many people, but hopefully appealing to you. Veganism is one of the most powerful strategies for sustainability available to humanity. At this point, some of you may be a little confused. When you think of veganism, you might be picturing a hippie skipping through a field with chickens and pigs. <laughs> Putting any biases aside, let's see how veganism contributes to a sustainable future. A diet that excludes animal products is one major aspect of veganism, although veganism is about more than diet. We will return to veganism a little later. But if we want to take a look at how veganism contributes to sustainability, we need to explore the environmental benefits of plant-based diets. First, let's dig into climate change. Climate change is likely the most challenging threat humanity has ever faced. It is fair to say that the future of the human race and millions of other species on this planet depends on our collective ability to address climate change. Climate change is caused by the release of greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. The primary contributor of these gases is the burning of fossil fuels. But that is not the only cause. Animal agriculture is responsible for 15% of global greenhouse gas emissions. That is more than the entire transportation sector. The consumption of meat, dairy, and eggs creates more emissions than every single car, boat, 
plane and train combined. If the world adopted plant-based diets, we could cut agricultural greenhouse gas emissions in half. That is an enormous chunk of global emissions. While this reduction in emissions is impressive, it actually doesn't tell the full story. Scientists believe we also need to pull carbon out of the atmosphere. It turns out, adopting plant-based diets is the most impactful and cost-effective method for pulling carbon out of the atmosphere. This is related to humans changing natural environments, often in the form of deforestation. All life is carbon-based. As plants grow, they use carbon from the atmosphere to build their structures. Globally, almost half of all ice and desert-free land is used for agriculture. This means that humans destroyed forests, grasslands, and other natural areas to create crop fields and pastures on a very large amount of land around the globe. If we all adopted plant-based diets, we could reduce agricultural land use by more than 75%. How much land is this 75% reduction? Incredibly, it's an area more than three times the size of the United States, including Alaska, Hawaii, and Puerto Rico. In other words, if we all adopted plant-based diets, we could convert an area more than three times the size of the United States from agriculture to natural areas. That amount of land is hard to comprehend. It is truly massive. By converting that land back to natural areas, we could pull an enormous amount of carbon out of the atmosphere. According to some estimates, if we all adopted plant-based diets, we could pull more than a decade's worth of carbon emissions out of the atmosphere. All of this suggests that plant-based diets are an incredibly powerful climate change solution. Climate change is the most well-known environmental issue. Biodiversity loss, or species extinction, is equally troubling. In the last 250 million years, the Earth has experienced five mass extinctions, the last being the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs. Scientists now believe that humans are causing the sixth great mass extinction of life on Earth. Think about that for a moment. Humans are causing species to go extinct at a rate only seen five previous times in the last 250 million years. According to the Center for Biological Diversity, dozens of species are going extinct every single day. This is a giant problem for multiple reasons. First, this does have impacts on human well-being. Different species play specific roles in maintaining the health of natural areas. When these species are driven to extinction, it can have negative effects on these natural areas. For instance, pollinating animals, such as bees, pollinate our crops. They are essential for producing the food that we eat. Right now, pollinators are going extinct due to human actions, such as habitat destruction and pesticide use. When pollinators disappear, we have methods for pollinating our crops, but those methods are costly and far less efficient. When we drive pollinators to extinction, it actually makes our food less plentiful and more expensive. Second, biodiversity loss is highly problematic beyond its impacts to humans. Humans share this planet with other species, and those species have just as much right to exist here as we do. When we drive a species to extinction, they are gone forever. There's no going back. For these reasons, I believe the current trend of species extinction is one of the great moral tragedies of our time. So how can plant-based diets help this issue? It turns out that animal agriculture, or should I say, the consumption of animal products is by far the leading cause of biodiversity loss. Biodiversity loss is mainly caused by habitat loss, and habitat loss is primarily caused by animal agriculture. Remember, if we all adopted plant-based diets, we could restore an area more than three times the size of the United States from agriculture to natural habitat. Converting those areas to natural habitat would save countless plants and animals from extinction. By not consuming animal products, you are protecting wild animals, like jaguars and sloths. All of this leads us to a striking conclusion firmly based in the science. Climate change and biodiversity loss are impossible to halt without a global transition to plant-based diets. Put another way, 
The adoption of largely plant-based diets is necessary if we hope to create an environmentally sustainable world. As you can see, plant-based diets are an environmental solution. But veganism is about more than diet. Veganism is a lifestyle and social justice philosophy that rejects exploitation and needless harm toward non-human animals. None of us want to intentionally harm animals. Veganism just asks us to be more consistent with our opposition to exploitation, violence, and needless harm. Veganism is supported by animal rights theory. Non-human animals, just like humans, feel pain and pleasure. They perceive the world around them in a unique way, and they want to be alive. This means that we should extend rights to other animals, just as we should to humans. A vegan ethic also asks us to redefine our relationship with non-human animals. If animals have rights, it's wrong to treat them as our property, as commodities that we can use and abuse. Instead, I believe we should care for them, view them as our companions, and give them freedom. So far, we've looked at the environmental benefits of plant-based diets, and explored veganism as a social justice philosophy. But how else are veganism and sustainability related? I believe that a holistic vision of sustainability should embrace veganism. To understand why, let's return to the idea of flourishing for a moment. Remember, sustainability is the possibility that human and other life, including non-human animals, will flourish on the planet forever. Similar to human flourishing, Animal flourishing should include the opportunity to live free and authentic lives. Exploiting animals for human purposes removes their ability to be free and removes their ability to flourish. This suggests that truly cultivating sustainability requires a rejection of animal exploitation. In other words, veganism is a necessary component of sustainability. I know this is a lot to take in, but the scale of the problem is enormous. Tens of billions of animals are slaughtered every year. Many of those animals are tortured. We are also currently experiencing a mass extinction event. The vast majority of animals on this planet do not have the ability to flourish. Wild animals are being driven to extinction, and livestock animals endure brutal cruelty and exploitation. Veganism is the central solution to both of these moral tragedies. I want you to know, I didn't go vegan overnight. It was a process of growth and discovery. My wife and I started our transition at university, both of us as environmental studies majors. As we learned about the environmental impacts of meat and dairy, we started by reducing our meat consumption. We were always animal lovers, but we also needed to explore animal ethics, asking ourselves, if we wouldn't eat our cat, why do we eat cows and chickens? It was both of these factors, the environmental and the ethical, that eventually pushed us to adopt veganism. Even then, I wasn't a vegan advocate. It wasn't until I was working on my master's degree in sustainability studies that I came to the conclusion that veganism is an incredibly powerful strategy for sustainability. It wasn't easy to dedicate my life to an issue so controversial, but I decided to become a vegan advocate and write my thesis on the intersections between veganism and sustainability. I'm telling you this because I acknowledge that this transition can be difficult, especially at first. People consume animal products for a variety of reasons, whether it's convenience, tradition, or taste, and not everybody has access to healthy plant-based foods. As a society, it's really important that we work towards ensuring equitable and complete access to healthy plant-based foods. Even so, the popularity and accessibility of plant-based foods is rapidly expanding. I mean, there are so many plant-based milks available now. Soy, oat, almond, cashew, rice, and more. And that vegan meal I showed you at the beginning of the talk was so delicious. I also want to reassure you that fully plant-based diets are perfectly healthy. How many of you know somebody who has suffered from heart disease, stroke, type 2 diabetes, or cancer? Probably most of us. Well, 
According to the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, the largest organization of food and nutrition professionals in the United States, plant-based diets can actually reduce your risk of developing these chronic diseases. The Academy also generally promotes well-balanced vegan diets as healthy. Maybe some of you are worried about being an athlete on a vegan diet. Well, here's Patrick Babamian, a dedicated vegan and literally one of the strongest men in the world. This talk is not about the health benefits of plant-based diets, but that's pretty impressive. Today, I've shared with you a powerful tool for creating a sustainable world. By choosing veganism, you don't have to wait until our politicians change laws or corporations change their behavior, although we need both of those things to happen. You can make a positive impact every time you decide to respect the rights of animals, starting by leaving them off your plate. With that, I leave you with a final thought. I want to see a future where humanities halted the environmental disasters of climate change and biodiversity loss. A future where we love and care for not only our fellow humans, but our animal companions as well. And a future where all life has the opportunity of flourishing. If you share that vision with me, I invite you to embrace veganism as we create a sustainable world together. Thank you.